Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought we would dive into a part of psychology studying that every single student is very eager to know more about, which are the interviews to get into masters. So at the end of last year, I actually did master interviews for psychology. I did them for the clinical psychology and the professional psychology programs. So I just want to flag that because I know that there are different other types of psychology master courses like developmental psychology or organizational. Uh, I'm not able to speak to those ones, but I will be speaking today to the clinical and professional degree interviews. When you start Googling online master interviews for psychology, People don't really dive into what gets asked and how it goes. There is a level of secrecy around the master interviews, and this is totally fair because it keeps it 100% level playing field for every single student. So I will flag that I won't be mentioning any specific questions that you are asked. I'm going to be talking based on the publicly available um, knowledge and providing my uh, experience, insight and advice surrounding that, which I really do hope you find useful. I could even talk about public info that you're not even aware of. I know that there were some parts of the master interviews that people did openly talk about, but I only found out about them very, very close to the interviews. So definitely stay tuned, watch the video and you know, hopefully you're able to walk away feeling a bit more in control um, and empowered regarding your own journey into masters. So the first thing I want to touch on is what can you do from very early on in your psychology study pathway to prepare for the master's interview? Well, unfortunately, I don't think you can think too much about the answers that you will provide in the interview because, you know, you're going to change personally. Your perspectives are going to change so much during the first four years. You know, you're going to become so much more sophisticated and mature in your knowledge of why you're there and what you're doing and what you hope to do you know your career goals could also change quite greatly so i wouldn't be worried too much if you're not in your honors yet about what am i going to say like how am i going to approach this interview i don't think that's anything to concern yourself with like i said until you get to honors but pre-honors so i'm talking like from the day that you sign up to study psychology this is what you should be thinking about work experience what can you bring to that master's interview to talk about? What can you draw personal knowledge on that is that is separate to what you've been taught in the classroom? Because all your peers have all been taught the exact same thing as you. So you're all going to be on the same wavelength in that regard. But how can you one up them? And you can one up them by having work, work or like paid or volunteer work experience under your belt. So from day one, and this was advice that was actually given to me and other uh, psychology students in I think year two, go and get work experience as soon as possible. Just look for anything, try to get hands on. This is going to make you so much more desirable in the interview process even getting selected to have an interview it's gonna put you up there so definitely think about this I actually made a video on my volunteering experience as a psychology student I studied full-time and I can guarantee you that depending on where you're volunteering or working it is completely doable to do both during your undergraduate degree I even volunteered during my honors degree so definitely uh, think about that now because that's going to come in really, really handy later on. That's all you have to worry about up until that moment. Now, when you start doing master applications in honors, this is when I do believe you should start sitting down, trying to find out as much information as you can about what to expect from master interviews and really starting to sort of just think a little in your head of like, what you're going to say and that's what we're going to get into now so in broad strokes i'm going to give you advice regarding what you should start thinking about this is stuff that i actually did and i do believe that it helped me i didn't feel unprepared regarding questions that were asked okay so i think what you really have to do is think about any job interview you've ever had start thinking about what it is that they ask in job interviews there's a lot of overlap between that and master interviews but just remember that master interviews are obviously centered around why like why are you here you know that type of thing so i would be sitting down and really thinking hard about what it is that i want why i'm studying psychology what my career goals are the experiences that i've had inside outside the classroom start trying to articulate and like pretend that you're giving somebody an elevator um pitch you know the like oh you've got like 30 seconds to tell someone why do you want to be a psychologist start thinking of 
start thinking of what you're going to say to very generic job style questions and practice them in an elevator pitch style. If you start doing this from the time that you start your master applications, it's not that you're going to be, you shouldn't be well rehearsed because you want the interviewers to not feel like it's rehearsed, but I think you're going to be more confident to draw from what it is that you want to say. So I do want to flag, please do not go into your master interview, like reciting a script because they are going to pick up on that. They want you to just be yourself. They want you to be genuine in the moment. They want you to be honest, but definitely have maybe talking points already worked out. So that's like my first thing that I think you really need to start thinking about. I would say a very smart thing is if you were interviewing for a psychology master's program, what do you think you might ask an applicant and then switch that around and try to answer those questions yourself and see what answers you come up with. You know, it might jog your memory early on of things that you've experienced or situations you've been in. And then, you know, that's really good too. I found that practicing early helped me think of things um, like situations I've been in. And I thought a lot about problem solving. You know, when was a situation where I solved a problem? This was stuff that by thinking about it early on, I was able to remember experiences that I had had that I otherwise they might have slipped my mind if I hadn't previously thought about them. So another thing to really think about is how you answer questions. And this is actually very, um, this is very general. This actually applies to job interviews. This applies to anything where you are required to reflect upon, you know, your personal experience and knowledge to answer a question. And I think, I think this is sort of the star method as well for when you're writing like key selection criterias. But if you are asked a question, you always have to try and like give an answer and then join it up with an example. So providing examples will strengthen you in the interview process. I can guarantee you that. So, you know, I said before, like, um, think about, start thinking a lot about your experiences early on, really start to think of examples too. So if you have a reason for something, you might be like, oh, I had a time when I learned this about myself, blah, blah, blah. Maybe there's an example that can go along with it. Or if there was a time you solved a problem, make sure you tell them the example and not just sort of like, you know, very generally, uh, yeah, I helped. So if you were in a job interview for like KFC, you wouldn't sit there and say, yeah, I have customer service experience. You'd have to sit there and be like, I have customer service experience. For example, blah, A, B, C, D. So yeah, you have to insert examples because that's going to really show the interviewee, the interviewer, sorry, like that you thoroughly do understand the question. You understand, you're very self-aware, you are knowledgeable, you have experience. So start thinking about that. Start thinking about maybe key things that you've experienced that have um, been been a real learning um, curve for you or taught you something. The other thing I want to add is I do believe that in an interview it is very good to ask the interviewer a question. So I would try and think of a question, a good question, just to show that you are being thoughtful and you do want to know more about the program and to display your level of interest. You know, don't put too much pressure on it because you already have enough to think about. But I would prepare a question that I guess doesn't sound like you're just asking a question for the sake of asking a question. Maybe it could be to do with like placements or course content, just anything. And I think, you know, even in job interviews, they always say prepare a question for the employer. So what do master interviews look like? I actually got a lot of interviews, so I can speak from experience that yes, they do vary between institutions. Overall, I would say that the majority of interviewers understand how nerve wracking it is and they make the experience a friendly one. Now, I'm, I want to be careful in saying that uh, some institutions might try to take a more casual approach. Others definitely will take a more formal approach. You, in my opinion, should always be formal, always be dressed very nicely. Make sure your, your background is appropriate. Make sure there's no like noise, you know, going on. Don't ever, don't get fooled into thinking like, because a university takes a, hey, like we understand that this is a big deal for you and we want it to be casual. Do not rock up, you know, like just sitting there. So sort of like, oh yeah, oh, okay, no. 
you're going you're applying to become a psychologist like you're going to be a professional so make sure you carry yourself like one throughout all the interviews in terms of what they specifically look like each institution maybe you have two to you can have anywhere from like two to four people interviewing you at once don't get overwhelmed by that because it is usually like you get asked one question by each person or two questions by each person so just stay focused in the moment Focus on who it is asking the question and yeah, don't don't get overwhelmed that there are more people in the room and I think just remember that they want you to do well because it's like they're also looking for really high quality students who are going to contribute positively to the program and the program's image. You know, these institutions want to churn out very good psychologists. So they, they're hoping to meet you and be like, oh wow, this person's really professional and mature. So just remember that because I think we always go into interviews thinking that they're sitting there being like, who's this person? But that's far from the truth, you know. The sooner that they are confident about finding high quality students, they can relax a little too because the interview process for them is also very long and they're also seeing lots of people. So just remember that. So yeah, you can have anywhere from like two to four people interviewing you. Majority of the time you're just being asked, like I said, questions. So, you know, think about job interview style questions. You can have role plays and you can also have uh, case example questions. So I would not freak out about these. The only thing I'm going to say is make sure you are paying attention to your university course. Every honors course does role plays as far as I'm aware, as in as part of course content. So again, just study, pay attention, do your absolute best practice for case scenario examples. Again, it's not going to be based on things that you aren't familiar with. It's going to be based on material that they that they know that they cover and a lot of the time just use common sense and I just want to flag that when you're in those situations take your time there is always this like desire on our end because we're anxious to rush and just get through it no 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 pace yourself breathe and this applies not only to those things but also being asked a question when you're asked a question you can sit with it for a moment you don't need to shoot back and be like you know like oh how are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. I'm doing really well. No, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then answer because you need time to, pr to you need time to process the question, think about what you're going to say and respond. Obviously, you can't take all day, but you want to show that you're being thoughtful with your responses. A lot of anxiety comes from this idea that I believe anyway that we're uh, an inconvenience and oh my god, I have to get through it and I'm, I don't want to waste their time. Uh, a lot of the time I found like I had a lot of extra time actually at the end of the interview and for myself I would say that the lesson there is I could have slowed down and I could have definitely taken more time because I'd always get to the end and I'd realize oh we actually finished up pretty early. Uh, most interviews go for about like 30 to 40 minutes which it sounds like a long time but when you're in there it's really not. Be kind to yourself please. This is a really big deal. Uh, because you do want to get into a master's program. So do not doubt yourself because you were nervous. I think I like in my experience all of us were nervous. The cohort was nervous. I would start thinking early on too. you know, put like a little, I don't know, what would you call it? Put a little care plan in place. You know, what is it that you can do during your interview to make yourself relax? Whether that's having maybe your favorite drink beforehand or listening to music. You know, I was a little bit lucky in that all my interviews were done over Zoom because of the lockdown situations. So I did have things on hand, you know, I had like uh, a stress ball, I had, you know, just Tic Tacs for beforehand just so I could be like, okay, you know, get in the zone. Yeah, so think about what it is that you can do to make it as nice of an experience for yourself as possible. So I think that's pretty much everything that I can really say in terms of master interviews, as in like how to approach them, how to prepare for them, what to expect. I think that at the end of the day, like any interview, the whole point is that you don't know what's going to be asked. They just want to see that you're professional, you're thoughtful, you're enthusiastic. If you really love studying psychology and you have definitely put in the effort, you really will be okay, no matter how nervous you are, like, and that's the thing too, like, you're nervous because you care, literally, like, you, you want it to go well. If you went into those interviews and you didn't have anxiety, like, 
I would be a little bit confused because I'd be thinking like how how confident are you and should you be that confident or like do you care if you do you care like what's your care factor here so just remember that the Yerkes Dodson law okay it is okay to have a bit of anxiety it actually um, can enhance your performance because you're alert you want to do well what was my thoughts post interviews the interviews they went over a couple of weeks I won't lie to you there were a lot of tears there were a lot of tears and unfortunately you know you would get off from an interview and you your brain immediately starts to be like nah it was bad don't be surprised actually if interviewers kind of keep a poker face they definitely can't like be like hey you got here you know oh great job you're secure so you do leave being completely unsure of how it's going to go. So I would get off with some interviews and there'd be like a lot of emotions. And don't forget, because of all the anxiety too, your brain is just like, whoa. So that's sort of expected as well, that you would leave an interview and be like, you know, that was a lot. Because uh, it's, you know, crying or, you know, those, those are good um, relievers for tension as well. But yeah, so there was a lot of self-doubt. And looking back, it was a bit of a waste of time because I, I can't do more than what I've done. So I made a video. I didn't actually get into clinical psychology, but I was in a position where I, I overall feel like I actually did really well in the interviews in the respect that I was able to draw from my experience, provide examples. I did articulate myself. I knew my talking points. I had really, really high grades. I had done volunteer experience. That was in my control. What was out of my control was what other students did, how other students behaved, what was their experience, what were their grades, what did they bring, you know, that for some reason um, put them above me. That's the stuff that was out of my control. So looking back, it was a real waste of time to beat myself up over these interviews that I had done and I was not successful in the outcome. I also, it's funny, but I also got a lot of interviews, which was something to be really proud of. And I got first round offer interviews, which was something to be really proud of because so many people apply for these master interviews and it is very competitive. And then like, I didn't even get interviews for some institutions because there's so many applications and that's not to scare you. I actually want you when you get that interview offer to realize that even that is an amazing outcome. Like it means you're on the right track and you're doing the right thing. So don't go into the interview thinking you're not good enough. You can't do this, blah, blah, blah. You've done the hard work, you got the interview offer, and that is because you literally deserve to have an interview in masters. So as long as you remind, like stay humble, obviously do your best, self-critique. There's nothing wrong with self-critiquing. Walking away from an interview and being like, okay, maybe I could have slowed down. Maybe I could have worded this differently. Maybe next time I'm not gonna use that example because it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. Nothing wrong with that. Self-critiquing is very, very different. Um, to sitting there and being like, I'm not good enough, blah, blah, blah. Because one is helpful, one isn't. One's a complete waste of time. So coming out of master interviews, I just think that try to take the self-critiquing aspect. Remember that a lot of other stuff is out of your control. You know, I had one um, coordinator really stressed to me, like, trust me, like, not getting in is not a reflection of you. We really do just have so many applicants. So do not do not wear it as like, okay, that means I'm not good enough. Because I'll tell you what, I'll be very honest with you. Uh, I have met clinical psychologists who I do wonder, how did you get into the program? What did you do to get in? Because I didn't think that they had the personality for it. Or I didn't think they had the professionalism for it. So you just have to accept that there is a whole range of variables and factors that you can't control. And you just have to move forward and focus on yourself and work out your next step. And I promise if that's the mindset you're in, you will get far in life because a lot of other people get defeated, they give up, they become a victim, and that's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, the world isn't going to like change because you know you had an injustice, you didn't get into the course you wanted. So please keep all that in mind as well. So some closing words. I think just remember, as long as you stay thoughtful, self-aware, you are organized and you care, I really do believe that you're going to do well. No matter what anxieties you have or even if you if self-doubt creeps in i think you know you're motivated and you want it you want it to go well so it will um and i even mean that even if you don't get into a course i genuinely think your interviews will probably be of a high quality i think that remember the only people who really would struggle are people who are like 
they don't pay attention um, at university, they don't really care, that sort of like P's get degrees mindset, because then they're like really flustered and disorganized by the time interviews roll around, they haven't prepared for them, they haven't thought about them. If you don't fall into that category, I really think you should relax a little bit and recognize that you're a good student and you're a good student for a reason and it's because of your personality, your mindset and your motivation. Um, I do wish everybody the best of luck, obviously. I think mid-year um, master applications for professional psychology are coming up. So now's a great time to actually start get thinking about that. I think everything in life happens as it happens and it happens for a reason and I genuinely believe that. So even if you don't get into the course you want but you get into another course, maybe seriously consider that for whatever reason that is the course you were supposed to get into. Or maybe you don't get into clinical but you get into professional. Like think about maybe there's a reason for that, maybe you're, you're supposed to go down a different path, maybe things are supposed to fall that way. Like let life happen as it happens. Always, you know, don't obviously like throw your hands up and say, oh, the universe, I'm going to put in no effort. Do your part, put in your hard work, put in your effort. But yeah, just see, just, just trust the universe a little bit because even for myself, I really thought I was going to get into clinical psychology. I definitely had the, um, the prerequisites. I met all the prerequisites for it. I'm in professional psychology now and I genuinely actually do believe that this is for a reason. I believe that I might enjoy i've actually deferred this year i'm gonna make a video about that but i actually do believe that for whatever reason i wasn't supposed to go into clinical and who knows why that is it could be because i'm led to a placement that i really enjoy which leads to a career like a job that i really really love so these are things that i'm even thinking about for myself so i hope you found this video helpful and if you have any other questions just leave them down below i like to talk off the top of my head <laughs> i don't prepare these videos because I find that if I talk off the top of my head I will probably talk about the, the, more, the more important things instead of dwelling on like every little thing so if if I have missed something I've missed it but just let me know below and I will address it and don't forget to subscribe and like see you next time bye